We ready, Cheese? Yep. Awesome. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. So good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. I truly believe that the Lord has a great word for all believers today. Um, this is a, a word that sort of been resonating uh, for a while. I believe that uh, God wants his people to uh, uh, be in a state of ready, to be prepared. Um, we're going to talk about a subject that's... Uh, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of pastors, a lot of preachers don't talk about. Uh, you know, they talk about uh, God is love and and He is, and God is good and He is, uh, but they don't tell about the the side that that we need to be prepared for. Yeah. But there's a time that's coming. The Bible refers to it as the day of the Lord. You know, I'm a, I'm a believer. I, I I got saved at 95, and and I believe that the Bible is the Word of God. I believe that the yeah. Bible is the truth. That what I read in the Bible, I believe, is God's word to me, and I take it as truth. So, Buffalo Bills kick off live. Kick it off. <laughs> so, uh, that's a sign. So, I, when, when the Bible tells me four, five, six, seven times about the day of the Lord, I have to take notice of that. Amen. We have to understand what, what is the day of the Lord. And there's a scripture I'm going to keep referring to back. It's out of 1 Thessalonians 5.2. And it says, the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Yeah. Okay, The day of the Lord is what we're going to be talking about. That's the title of the message this morning, the day of the Lord. But remember, it comes like a thief in the night. As a law enforcement officer, I, I, uh, when I was on the streets, I took many, many reports of burglaries. People getting their houses broken into, people getting their cars broken into. And... You know, and, and these people always came and, and stole when the people weren't home. People would leave to go to the store, they'd come back, their stuff would be gone. Like a thief in the night. That's how suddenly it happens. In the thief, like a thief in the night. The great day of the Lord. We're going to go to the Old Testament. We're going to talk about an old prophet, one of the minor prophets, Zephaniah. We're going to go to Zephaniah chapter 1. Zephaniah was a prophet that was, that was raised up by God at the time when uh, Nebuchadnezzar was getting ready to take over uh, Israel. They were getting ready to be held in captivity. And times were going to be tough for the nation of Israel. Now one thing about history is that we have to know about history so we don't repeat the mistakes that are made in the past. Amen? That's right. Amen. That's right. The nation of Israel made many, 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 infinity mm -hmm. mistakes. We as believers, we cannot keep making those same mistakes over and over again and expect that God is going to continue to bless us. In the day of the Lord, it tells, it comes like a thief in the night. It comes so suddenly. And Zephaniah was given this task of, of going to the nation of Israel and telling them about the days of the day of the Lord. And I am coming to you today to remind you that we are in those days. See, we're all giddy because Buffalo's in the playoffs, but we are really in the last days. We are really in those last days. Rumors of wars, wars, rebellion, children turning against their parents, people turning away from God. People are turning away from God in droves. We see pandemics, people dying, and people turning away from God at a time when we need God the most. Amen? Amen. And I truly believe that God is preparing his people for this great and tragic day. Zephaniah 1, we're going to start in chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 2 through 6. And Zephaniah, this is the word of the Lord. It says, I will sweep away everything from the face of the earth, declares the Lord. See, we should stop right there and, and sort of contemplate what, what God says is he's going to take away everything from the face of the world. I will sweep away both man and beast. I will sweep away the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea and the idols that cause the wicked to stumble. Come on. The idols that cause the wicked to stumble. The greatest people 
that God called my nation was the nation of Israel, my children, my people, my most treasured possession. He chose them because they were the one people of that time that believed in one God, monotheistic. They believed in one God. They called him Yahweh. Amen. We heard the song today when Judah, that was one of the names they gave God because they didn't want to say Yahweh because it was such a holy name that they would have to bow in reverence or clean themselves just to even say the name of Yahweh. How we have fallen in just this amount of time, God's name is not as great as it should be in our lives. Because of these worthless idols, and worthless idols just are not statues that were brought up. Right. What, any idol that takes your uh, attention away from God is an idol. Yep. Football teams could be an idol. <laughs> Did he say that? Yeah, that's true. You know, uh, people here, as you heard, Pastor, they idolize football players. They, they, are, they are heroes. They want to change the name of streets. Yes. Josh Allen's house. They, they, you know, they, and it's amazing. You know, I come from California. I come from the San Francisco Bay Area. I am not a Buffalo Bills fan. I am a San Francisco 49er fan. We have five Super Bowl trophies. Five. I've been a Niner fan all my life. I started going in the 50s. That's right, the 1950s. <laughs> not the 1850s. And I've been a fan all my life. I've lived and died with my Niners. But I have never seen worship like I have seen here in, the, in Western New York. It is the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. Tonight, there's a game of what, 640? Temperature is supposed to be like 20 degrees, 18 degrees. There's going to be a group of people out there in Buffalo that are going to be partying outside, whooping it up in 20 degree weather, watching a game on TV, the same TV they have in their homes. What for? It's, it's this thing with this idle thing. Last night I watched the news from 11 o'clock to 11.20, all they talked about was Buffalo. That was the whole news. You would think nothing else was going on in the world. Now, I'm not saying, you know, don't be a Buffalo Bills fan. I'm not saying any of that stuff. I don't want you guys to start throwing rocks at me as I'm leaving, flattening my tires. But, you know, firing me. But I just want you to be aware that there are more important things than the Buffalo Bills. See, the day of the Lord comes like a thief of the night when you least expect it. Yeah. See, it says two people are going to be plowing, boom, one person's gone. That's right. Two people are going to be walking down the street, boom, one person is gone. Six people are going to be gathered in the living room getting ready to watch the Buffalo Bills game, boom. No. No. Half of them are gone. That's a great woman. <laughs> and then you're going to see people really turn away from God. <laughs> The, the, the day of the Lord is coming like a thief in the night when you least expect it. But God is not interested in taking your fame away from the Buffalo Bills. He's not, he's not really trying to do anything to you but to get your attention. The thing, I will stretch out my hand against Judah and against all who live in Jerusalem. I will destroy every remnant of Baal worship in this place. And the very names of the idolatrous priest. The idolatrous priest. What? We see that today. Everything that I'm reading right now, you see today. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see idolatry in every form. A couple of weeks ago, there was this big deal election down in Georgia. There was one man that was running who was a minister in the Baptist faith. He was running on the Democratic ticket, and his platform was that if Jesus were alive today, he would say it was okay for a woman to have an abortion. No. That abortion 
was a woman's right to choose, and he tried to say that it was in the Bible. False prophets. And there are people that actually believe that, and there are pastors that backed him up, and I'm thinking, oh, Lord, what are we coming to? Which Bible are these people reading? I just got done telling you I believe the Bible is the true Word of God. And I looked up every scripture that I could find in every translation, and nowhere in the Bible did it tell me that sin was okay with God. That's right. And sin and abortion is a sin because it's murder. But yet we have people, the highest person in the land, claiming to be a devout Catholic. And a, a woman, second uh, highest, claiming to be that abortion is a right. That sin is a right. We have come so far away from the word of God that if you look at history what happened when God's people sinned he sent the flood what happened in the wilderness when God's people fled he sent snakes he sent earthquakes he sent pestilence what do we have today the coronavirus if that's not a pestilence what is it it's a virus How many people have died from this pestilence? Too many. A lot. Bunch. Too many. I saw this article yesterday in California. 600 people a day are dying in California. 600 people a day. Church, God is trying to get our attention. God is trying to get our attention. God is having us in a state of ready. To be prepared for the day of the Lord that's going to come like a thief in the night. Are you ready? Have you prepared yourself? Western New Yorkers, we know how to prepare for things. We know how to prepare for winter. We know how to prepare for summer. We know how to prepare for spring and fall. We, there, there are seasons that we need to prepare for. As the seasons change, we need to be pre prepared and ready. I know that when we go to spring, from spring to summer, I have to go down to the basement and get 47 little things up there, bring them up there for Lucy to change into her summer clothes. <laughs> and then take the 47 things down there with their winter clothes. We have to be prepared. Don't you have winter boots? Don't you have summer shoes, flip flops? We are a nation that has to be prepared, and we are a people of God that need to prepare ourselves. Do not fall for the lies that you hear. If you don't know the word of God, how are you going to know that a pastor is not telling you the truth? That's right. That's right. That's right. And I truly believe that, I don't want to say they're ignorant, but they, they're ignorant because they don't know the word of God, and they believe what this guy is saying. You pick and choose what you want to hear. You, you get your ears tickled, you believe. Yeah. The word of God in Jeremiah says, Lord, what can I tell these people? Your word is offensive to them. Amen. People that don't know God's word find offense to it. Yeah. Oh, you're homophobic because you, you think that uh, homosexuality is a sin. It is. Oh, you, you're, you don't like women because you think that abortion is murder. It is. That's not my opinion. That's God's word. That's God's word. Don't get mad at me. Get mad at God. But you should get mad at God. Pastors, those, those who bow down on the roofs to worship the starry host... Those who bow down and swear by the Lord and who also swear by Moloch. Moloch was a, a God that the people would sacrifice their firstborn children. Yeah. Moloch was the God that the people would sacrifice their children to. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Moloch was the God 
that people would sacrifice their children to. And now you see these people, the same people that swear by God, also swear by the God of Moloch. We have the same situation here today where people are proclaiming to be religious, God-fearing people, but they're saying that it's okay to support mullet and the sacrifice of children. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't want to hear this. Oh, Pastor, you know, you're getting kind of political. No, I'm not getting political. Biblical is not political. And it's not even subject to disagreement. God's word is God's word. And the day of the Lord is coming. And if you are not prepared for it, then you're going to be in a world of hurt. My job as a pastor is to prepare you for things to come. My, God, my word as a pastor is to... My word. My job as a pastor is to give you God's word, but you have to make the decision whether or not you want to follow it or not. That's right. I cannot force you to do what you don't want to do. We can't force you to turn your lives over to God. We can't force you to prepare for the day of the Lord. Zephaniah 1, 14 through 15, The great day of the Lord is near and coming quickly. The cry on the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty warrior shouts his battle cry. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of trouble and ruin, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness. <clears throat> sort of sounds like the weather in western New York in the winter time the, this concept developed through Jewish and Christian scripture is a day of divine apocalyptic judgment at the end of the world did you hear what he said there will be a day of wrath a day of distress and anguish a day of trouble see many of us think right now that what we're going through is trouble you know, and I don't want to diminish anybody's what they're going through because everybody has to go through something. But when that day comes, it's going to be like nothing we have ever gone through in our life. We always hear that, you know, this pandemic, nothing like this has ever happened in our lifetime. But the day of the Lord is coming like a thief in the night. And when it comes, it's going to catch us by surprise. And nothing like that will happen in your lifetime again. Zephaniah 2, 1 through 3 tells us how do we get through the day of the Lord? And it says we are summoned to repent. You heard Pastor Maria talk about repent. God is calling his people to repent, to prepare yourselves for his coming. To repent. Gather together, gather yourselves together, you shameful nation, before the decree that takes effect, and that day passes like windblown shaft before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you, before the day of the Lord's wrath comes upon you. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the land, you who do what he commands. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you will be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. Amen. Repent. Amen. Repent. In 1 Thessalonians 5-1, through 1, the title of that is the day of the Lord. It says, for you know that the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come upon them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. Those of you that have gone through labor pains know the pain of labor. <clears throat> you know, you can't even describe it. You know, when a man has a cold, he goes to bed for three weeks. You know, we can't, we can't understand labor <clears throat> and the pain that goes through. I remember being in the delivery room uh, with uh, uh, one of the wives, I can't remember, and, uh, uh, and, the, and the, the doctor was like, oh, you could hold her hand. If you ever, men, if you ever get that thing, don't, don't, don't fall for that trap. Don't do that. Don't grab the hand, pat her head, pray for her. Don't grab her hand, okay? So anyway, you know, I'm holding her hand and I'm, I'm trying to be com comforting, you know, uh, it's okay. They're there, they're there. All of a sudden, it's like, ah! And all of a sudden, the biggest pain in my hand as she's crushing every bone in my little fingers and, and, I, and I'm falling to my knees. And I'm going, you're killing me, you're killing me. And the doctor goes, that's not half of what she's going through. I thought I was going to die. 
And that doctor told me that's not half of what she was going through. So as we go through, you know, the destruction that's going to come is, and it's what a great description, as labor pains. Painful? Yeah. Painful? But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness. This is for you in his presence, church. But you in his presence, church, are not in darkness, so that this day should not surprise you. We should be ready. We should be, you know, everybody is, is so fearful of the day of the Lord, but we should be, we should be encouraged. If you, if you read the word and you find out what is after that, as a believer, that's, that's our goal. Yeah. You know, we all have a purpose in life, but my purpose in life is to get to heaven where there's no more tears. Amen. There's no more pain. There's no more suffering. And God will be with his people and we will be with God. The word of the Lord comes to his people as a comfort, not as a curse. Amen. As a comfort. But so many people take the word of the Lord as, as some sort of punishment. Oh, I can't drink. I can't have sex outside of marriage. I can't do drugs. And it's like, oh my God, those are the things that you're worried about? Shouldn't you be worried about you know, if you could get to heaven. I wish I had a dollar for every time I heard somebody say, well, you know, I'm not ready to accept the Lord right now, Pastor. I still have, I'm still young. I still have stuff I have to do. I still have to part. I still got to go to college. <laughs> Save your money. <laughs> Repent. Repent. We talked about this last week, I believe. The first Preacher, the first message preached from John the Baptist was repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Amen. The first message Jesus preached after he came out of the wilderness, repent, Amen. for the kingdom of heaven has come near. I'm here today to tell you in his presence, church, all you listening on Facebook Live, everyone that can hear the sound of my voice, repent, Amen. for the day of the Lord is near. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to get you ready to prepare. Acts 2, 38. Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. We all have something we need repenting from. Yes, yeah, we do. We do. Right. You know, at the church when we came out here, there was this elderly woman, elderly, she's probably my age. <laughs> and uh, the senior pastor was preaching a message on we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. And as we, uh, as was our custom, as the church left, the pastors would be at the door greeting the people as they left. And this lady was very offended with pastor. And she said, you know, I never sin. I have never sinned, she said. Wow. And I looked at the pastor, the pastor looked at me, and what do you say? He said, really, you've never lied? Well, yeah. You've never cheated? Well, well yeah. <laughs> you've never stolen? I've never stolen. you never taken a, a pen from work? Well, yeah. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But, you know, sin is all relevant to what's going on in our noodle. The word of the Lord is clear about sin, about the rep repercussions for sin. But sin is not the end of the world because there's forgiveness for sin. Yes. It's through the blood of the Lamb. It's through repentance. God says that if you seek Him with all of your heart, He will be your God and you will be His people says he will forgive your sins and remember them no more. All you got to do is ask. The days of going to a man and confessing your sins or, or sacrificing a bull or a buffalo yeah. are over. The perfect lamb sacrificed 
so that we and our sins are forgiven so that we may enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Repent and be baptized. Acts 3, 9, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. You have to repent. <clears throat> Without repentance, there really is no salvation. That's right. yeah. Yeah. Without repentance, there really is no salvation. To repent means to turn from sin and dedicate oneself to one's life. To turn from sin. To feel regret or contrition. To change one's mind. We get the word repent from the Hebrew word shub, S-H-U-W-B, which translates to turn back, to turn around and go back. To repent. To go back the way you started. So many of us, we get saved and we're walking this path that's of righteousness and truth and we're doing everything we're supposed to do and then all of a sudden we sort of get sidetracked. We sort of get off kilter a little bit. We need that repentance to get ourselves back on track. Yeah. Pastor Maria is sort of a, is it snowing? It's pretty. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> In the book of Joel, chapter 2, 28-32, the title, once again, The Day of the Lord. What's going to happen in the Day of the Lord? What's going to happen in those days is that the prophets are going to raise up. What you're going to see, it says, Afterwards, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will have visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Right. In the day of the Lord, God has not forgotten us. We, we just sang a song, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. In the day of the Lord, God's going to pour out his spirit on all his believers. On all those that are called by his name. I will show wonders in the heavens and on earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone, and everyone, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be deliverance as the Lord had said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The day of the Lord is coming like a thief in the night. And we need to be prepared. We need to be ready for when that day comes. And expect it. Don't fear it. Look forward to it. In John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The only way to the Father is through Jesus. I don't care what you hear, I don't care what you see, uh, what you read. The Bible says, makes it very clear, no one comes to the Father except through me. That's, That's right. Jesus says. Salvation is in Jesus. Acts 4, 11 through 12, Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Part of our repentance is our salvation. We need to turn back to Jesus. We need to turn away from Dr. Fauci's. Amen. We need to turn away from the Donald Trumps and the Bidens and the Harrises and the Pelosi's and the Schumers. We need to turn away from them and turn back to the author and the finisher of life. We need to turn ourselves around Follow Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the stone the builders rejected, and salvation comes only through him. That's right. In John 3, 15, 16, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish. When that day of the Lord comes, we will not perish. Do you believe the Bible is the true word of God? Yeah. It tells you we will not perish. It, those who believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. There is more to it than this. 
There's some people, I feel so bad for people that think that this is it. Right. That this short amount of time on earth is all that we have. That God created us just for a short time. 10, 20, 30, 40. How many years do you think you have? 120. <laughs> we hope. You know, we all expect to live to be a ripe old age, but what is a ripe old age? In the Bible, it was 800 years. Can you imagine? 800 years plowing your driveway? <laughs> I'm 69 years old. I almost killed myself with the, the three days I had to plow. When I got home, so. But you never know. Tomorrow's never promised. I shared many, 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 many times from the pulpit coming up on a on an anniversary that I don't even want to celebrate. January 27th, 2007. I got that phone call from my daughter in California telling me that my 30-year-old son was dead. He died of congestive heart failure. 30 years old. Athlete. Was an athlete his whole life. Had heart issues that nobody knew. The trainers never found it. He had four kids. Just starting his life. Started his own business. Everything seemed to be going good. I talked to him the night before. We talked about plans of bringing him out here to Western New York in April. For his birthday, him and the, the kids. And the next day, he was gone. Tomorrow isn't promised. And life comes so quick. The day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night. You don't expect it. No, we don't want to see the buffalo. We're in church. We don't expect to not be here tomorrow. But yet, the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night. Are you ready? Are you prepared? Have you done all that you could do in your life? Is there unforgiveness in your heart that needs to be taken care of? Is there hate in your heart that needs to be taken care of? Is there regrets in your heart that needs to be taken care of? This is the time. This is the place. Because it's going to be a time. It's too late. The Bible says we're going to stand in judgment for everything that we have done. And I hate to be the person standing behind me because you're going to be in that line for a long time as I'm giving my testimony of everything that I've done wrong. But it's just to show what a forgiving God is that everything that I've done wrong in my life, God still has forgiven me. Amen. He has still called me his son. He has still made me an heir to the kingdom. And he Amen. still says that he will welcome me into heaven. That's right. Because I repented. We need to repent. We need to be ready. And we need to repent and, and ask forgiveness every single day. Amen. You know, sometimes I make people mad. I don't even know it. I, I make people mad. And, you know, I have to ask for forgiveness. Because God says that you're not supposed to make people mad. But we do. So we need to, we need to seek forgiveness. Anybody married? Yeah. yeah. You need to seek forgiveness every day. <laughs> About every 12 hours, you should be asking God to forgive you for something. How many got kids? Every hour. Every hour, you have to ask for forgiveness. God is so good. Amen. Exodus 15, 2. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Is the Lord your strength? Yes, he is. Yes. is the Lord, does he come to your defense whenever you need it? Yes, he does. Then he is your salvation. He is my God. I will praise him, my Father's God. I will exalt him. Do you praise God? Do you have a time of worship where all you do is praise God? Do you give God a few moments of your time? I had a pastor one time say 
when he was talking about tithing, he said, imagine if God wanted 10% of your time instead of 10% of your money. That you would have to give God two hours and 40 minutes every day. How many of us could do that? Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Whom shall I fear? The Bible says he did not give us a spirit of fear. Whom shall I fear? He is your light, your salvation. Who do you fear? The Bible says don't fear man that could take your life. Fear the one that could send you to hell. Amen. And, and I believe that God really doesn't send us to hell. We sort of earn our way there. Yeah, he sends. We sort of send ourselves there. He just sort of points us in the right direction. Are you ready, church? Are you ready? The day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When you least expect it. Are you ready? Have you prepared yourself? Have you repented? Have you turned? It's not too late now. That's right. It's not too late now. But tomorrow, I can't tell you. Tomorrow's never promised. As I said earlier, you know, we make plans, but we never know what's going to happen. Last week, I guess there was a fire somewhere around here. People went to bed. A woman and her two children died. They went to bed thinking they, they were going to have a full day the next day. And a fire took their lives. How many people, tragically, will be driving in a car, will be involved in an accident that will take their life? Or people that are dying of violence here in Buffalo and Niagara Falls. Every day you look in the paper, somebody's getting killed. Those people thought they had a full day coming the next day. Tomorrow is never promised. Now is the time to repent. Now, when Jesus and John the Baptist said, the kingdom of heaven is near, repent. Amen. Turn. Some of us need to get our head out of the sand, forget politics, start walking with God, let God be God. <clears throat> Don't worry about who's in Washington, who's in Albany, who's in Niagara Falls. God is still in charge. Amen. He's still on the throne. Yes, he is. He's the king. We don't bow down to, to starry hosts. We don't bow down to fake gods. We bow down to the one true God. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, would you bow your heads? Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you are a great God, an awesome God, powerful God, mighty God, yet so loving, tender, and forgiving. We thank you, Lord, for the, your son and the blood that he shed for the forgiveness of our sins. This morning, Father God, we come to you as sinners saved only by your grace. We ask, Lord, that you forgive us our sins right now, Father God, for those sins that are hidden, forgotten, closed off, Lord. We open ourselves to you right now, and we say, forgive us, that you wash us whiter than snow, that you cast our sins upon the deepest, darkest sea, never to be remembered again. Lord, we thank you that you are God who forgives and forgets. This morning, Lord, we just ask that you bless us, that you anoint us, that you keep us safe, Lord, that you protect us. For we know that tomorrow's not promised, but Lord, we thank you for the day that you have given us today. We thank you for all the days that we have left. So this day, Father God, is the day that you made, and we will rejoice, and we will be glad in it. We come to you, Lord, Sinners saved only by your grace, who love you, who worship you, and honor you on this great day, the day of the Lord that is coming. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen.